My 7S4P lithium pack has been running for just over a year now, so I thought it might be time for a little review and probably a bit of maintenance. So for those of you who haven't seen this before, it's a 7S lithium pack, 7 cells in series, and uh, that gives me a nominal voltage of about 25.9, I believe it is, but I actually charge these up to about 4 volts per cell, uh, which is what, 28 volts, 4 times 7. And it's uh, also 4P, 4 cells in parallel, and uh, each cell is roughly about 2500 milliamp hour, so 2.5 amp hours. Well, that gives me 10 amp hours at, uh, well, 29 volts or something like that. And this solar charge controller that's connected to these 18650s is a standard lead-acid solar charge controller uh, that I've made no adjustments to except for the um, battery setting, which I believe I set to gel. Yes, I did, and that um, charges to the lowest level. So uh, it charges to about 28 volts or 4 volts per cell. So as I haven't modified this uh, solar charge controller, it's still doing a bulk charge and a float charge, which you would normally associate with lead acid batteries. However, these cells get charged up during the day and uh, discharged at night. So actually, they never really get into the uh, float setting. And I've talked about that in a previous video. This uh, device down here, the capacity controller, keeps an eye on the voltages of the individual groups of cells. As you can see, they're all sat at the moment about 3.78, 3.77 volts, and uh, they're nicely balanced. All of the uh, voltages of each of the groups are very close together. Now, originally I bought this capacity controller just to monitor those voltages, but I found it does have a balancing function within it, and it's actually running through that process at the moment as it cycles through the various different cell voltages, which might be a little bit difficult, but there is an indicator at the top on which cell is being read at any one moment. And while it's doing that, it's also doing a balance function. But after a year of use, what can I say? Well, I've been really impressed with this setup. The uh, battery holders have worked brilliantly. Um, there's been no issues with the uh, contacts there. The fuses have all held up perfectly well. I haven't had to replace a single one, although I am, you know, drawing quite a low level from here. The capacity controller has been, uh, well, the star of the show in many respects. Uh, this little device that only cost me about £3, $4, um, has kept these batteries in balance perfectly throughout the whole year and being able to monitor each individual cell's um, voltage there has been excellent. 100 watts of solar on the input here has been enough except for on two occasions in the uh, very shortest of winter days uh, when uh, of course the lights on the outside of the shed tend to be on for longer as well so we've got short days and long nights and low temperatures as well so on those two occasions these cells dropped to three volts and i decided to apply an external charger but two days in uh, over 360 well I don't think that's too bad. But now today I thought it would be interesting to see about doing a quick and dirty upgrade of the capacity of this particular battery bank. Um, now that could help me get through those short days and long nights or it could compound the issue slightly because I'm still only going to be able to put 100 watts of solar um, on the input here. So uh, will a bigger battery bank um, help me or hinder me? Well, I'm not entirely sure. I guess the only way to find out is to test it out. So here's a box of 18650s which I've been testing over the summer and uh, yeah, well, these are left in pairs. The nickel strip between the pairs of cells I've left intact and I first saw this idea 
on Paul Kennett's channel uh, and his uh, theory for this I think is quite good that these cells here were manufactured at the same time sent to the uh, laptop manufacturer and uh, um, hot weld spot welded sorry together and they've lived their whole life uh, in that way so they've had the same amount of charges and discharges they've been abused the same way so um, these should be um, almost identical cells so when you test them together 4871 milliamp hours tested uh, this one well you can have that number um, for each cell so uh, yeah I think these cells should work perfectly and I think I've got enough of these uh, pairs of cells to make my 7s 4p pack but of course it won't be 7s 4p anymore it'll be 7s 8p Right, so to be on the safe side, I'll disconnect the uh, solar charge controller from the system and I will also, uh, well, I may as well disconnect the capacity controller as well and uh, I'll get these cells out of the system. So I've removed all the cells now from the system and I've been on repacker.com and put in the capacities of all my pairs of cells and these are the groups that it has decided will make the most even pack. And as you can see here the uh, totals at the bottom 20,000 milliamp hours and uh, very very little divergence just the uh, 20,071 is my lowest and uh, 20,076 is my highest there so just five milliamp hours between the uh, different groups of cells that's uh, pretty impressive I think so let's get some cells in the system and I must remember this is the most negative point and that's the most positive point which means these cells actually do flip round from being negative to positive to uh, being negative to positive. So, uh, well, we're starting at this end. So, uh, 5226 there, uh, 4993, 4942, and 4913. That's my first group of eight parallel 18650s. So there we have all the uh, cells plugged in to the battery holders now. Everything seems to be nice and tight. And uh, let's plug in the uh, capacity controller. Beep, beep. And uh, we'll change the type to lithium ion. It says they're 99% full. And uh, if I uh, press and hold the type button, it will start cycling through the voltages and it's going to start balancing those cells at the same time as well. Now, I should mention that I did check all the voltages of these cells before I put them in parallel with each other. It wouldn't be good to put, I don't know, a 3.7 volt cell here next to a 4.2 volt cell because then you would get a great deal of current uh, traveling between the two of them potentially so I did check these are all at 4.2 volts all fully charged uh, before they went in so all that remains is to uh, plug in the solar charge controller and uh, we'll just screw that up nice and tight and uh, that's reporting a fully charged cell no problem there and uh, well i think that's pretty much it let's uh, get it back on the wall and there we have it up on the wall in the shed the cells seem to uh, sit in reasonably nicely and uh, the sonos is connected everything's back to where it should be but what about these original cells well they've had a good few cycles haven't they uh, 360 plus um, cycles being discharged at night and charged during the day in warm temperatures and cool temperatures I wonder if these numbers still stack up is this cell still going to be 2460 milliamp hours well I think I'd like to test that to find out but that will be for another video Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.